In a small laboratory of the pharmaceutical conglomerate IG Farben, four German scientists spin over their test tubes. They were tasked with finding a new cheaper pesticide. In 1938, German farms needed a powerful remedy for weevils. These small pests were wreaking havoc on fields and orchards. In the city of Wuppertal, located in North Rhine, Westphalia, these chemists happened upon an unexpected discovery. German scientist Gerhard Schrader, the head of the scientific group, mixed phosphorus with cyanide. Schrader, along with his colleagues Otto Ambrose, Gerhard Ritter, and Vanderlind, came into contact with the resulting liquid, causing them to fall ill and spend about a month in a hospital. The company responsible for the scientists' work reported the incident to representatives of the German army. Some army men were so impressed by the effect of the new substance that they called it Taboon, which means taboo in German. After Schrader and his team recovered, they continued studying the toxic liquid. However, their study began to shift away from the liquid's potential as a pesticide. Having studied the substance and slightly modifying it, the chemist had discovered a far more dangerous substance. To honor the names of its creators, the new substance was named sarin. Due to its excessive toxicity, it was shown to have no agricultural potential. But the Nazi government was more interested in the use of sarin as a weapon. Schrader's team was strongly advised to focus on this particular use of the substance. Taboon and sarin laid the foundation for the first family of G-Series nerve warfare agents. The name of the series derives from the first letter of the country of origin, Germany. After Taboon and sarin came Soman and Cycloserin. Substances were also designated with capital letters GA, GB, GD, and GF, respectively. The main negative effect of the developing pesticide was aimed at the insect's nervous system, which is why the G-series gases attack the central nervous system of a person. The signals sent by the central nervous system are distorted, causing the internal organs to lose their functionality. People afflicted with sarin choke only because they are unable to control the usually unnoticeable process of inhalation and exhalation. Scientists have identified how sarin and similar compounds act on the body. Such substances are called cholinesterase inhibitors. This category includes a number of medical supplies. When our nerves communicate with each other, a special chemical called a neurotransmitter is released. It transmits the necessary information and then appears acetylcholinesterase, an enzyme which destroys this transmitter. Nerve agents prevent the enzyme from performing its function, so the neurotransmitter increasingly continues to transmit its message. So for example, you're outdoors with a strong wind. The airflow dries up the liquid covering your eyes and sends a signal that this deficiency needs to be replenished. If everything is functioning properly, your lacrimal glands secrete just the right amount of fluid to keep your eyes hydrated. But if the enzyme that breaks down the neurotransmitter is blocked by the action of sarin, then the signal to release tears will not stop. They will flow constantly and uncontrollably controllably, and this happens simultaneously all over the body, just a few seconds after exposure to sarin. The neurotransmitter acetylcholine begins to accumulate rapidly in the body. It continues to give the nerves the usual signals, but it does so uninterruptedly. All smooth muscles in the body go crazy. Discharge from the eyes and nose is unstoppable. Saliva is released uncontrollably. The contents of the intestines and bladder are emptied arbitrarily. The stomach throws up bile and food. Sarin is able to enter the body in different ways and forms, so when a small amount of gas vapors is inhaled, the pupils become maximally constricted, but they can also vary in sizes. Accordingly, a person begins to see poorly and cannot concentrate his vision on one object. In addition, he will experience a heaviness in the chest, breathing becomes difficult, severe headaches emerge, and salivation increases. If no more sarin is ingested, the person will survive and recover, but symptoms may persist for up to three days. The danger of this gas lies in its cumulative effect. This means that it accumulates in the body. If a person remains in contact with the substance or immediately receives a large dose of it, the symptoms of the exposure worsen and can lead to death. On top of the uncontrolled secretions described earlier, there is also intense perspiration. A person is incapacitated by an inexplicable, extremely strong feeling of fear and anxiety. Then they feel suffocation, start having convulsions, and after loss of consciousness, paralysis kicks in, causing breathing and heart functions to cease. Sarin can also be absorbed into the body through the skin. Muscle spasms begin in the affected area. 
then weakness appears, followed by paralysis. In this case, symptoms can appear after a few hours, in contrast to vapor damage. When the gas is inhaled, the body is almost instantly affected. Lethally, high concentrations of the substance can be easily created not only indoors, but also outdoors. Given the fact that sarin is practically odorless and tasteless, the victims would be unaware of what was going on. They can catch a subtle scent of blooming apple trees. The history of the use of nerve agents dates back to the Stone Age, when ancient people used to apply snake venom to arrowheads. The first modern use of chemical weapons is considered to be the strike by the German army on Belgium on April 22, 1915. During this battle, 5,000 people were killed or wounded by the use of 150 tons of chlorine gas. IG Farben, the conglomerate of German concerns which developed sarin, previously created a chemical warfare agent called Zyklon B. On September 3, 1941, 600 captured Soviet soldiers and 250 Poles were executed with this chemical weapon. A little later, another 900 Soviet prisoners of war died from Zyklon B. This happened in Block No. 11 of the Auschwitz concentration camp. Towards the end of World War II, Nazi Germany already had prepared about 12,000 tons of sarin. If the Germans used all these reserves, millions of people would have died. The military leaders allegedly tried in every possible way to convince Adolf Hitler to use sarin in battle, but he adamantly refused. It's thought that the reason for this is Adolf's personal acquaintance with chemical weapons in the World War I. In Hitler, a biography, the historian Ian Kershaw claims that the future Fuhrer was the victim of a gas attack. On the night of October 14, 1918, near the Belgian city of Repri, Hitler and his comrades came under fire from mustard gas. After that, he was forced to recover in a military hospital in Pomerania. Countries began to actively stockpile chemical weapons. Nevertheless, the consequences of chemical warfare in the First World War made them wear of its use. In 1993, the United States signed the Chemical Weapons Convention. They began to dispose of their gas stockpiles and actively urged other governments to do the same. According to the official statements, Russia had disposed of all their chemical weapons by 2017, and the U.S. plans to complete the disposal by 2023. However, this did not save the modern civilized world from chemical attacks. There are at least four known uses for sarin. The first one took place March 16, 1988 during the Iran-Iraq War. An Iraqi plane sprayed sarin and taboon over the Kurdish city of Halabaja. Locals witnessed dead birds fall from the sky. As their neighbors were driven to insanity by the severe pain. This attack killed about 5,000 people, including hundreds of children. Another 20,000 were injured. Almost all the victims belonged to the civilian population. The second case of sarin use occurred in Japan, March 20, 1995. Shoko Asahara, the leader of the local religious sect Um Shunkyo, organized a terrorist attack in the Tokyo subway. A group of 10 people sprayed lethal gas on three subway lines in Tokyo. The chemical weapons then caused the death of 12 people and injured thousands of victims. The people of Syria have encountered sarin twice. During the Civil War, August 21, 2013, a suburb of Damascus was fired upon by rockets from the Bashar Hafez al-Assad regime. According to a UN report, sarin was used to attack the area in eastern Ghouta. The exact number of victims is unknown. The U.S. report claims 1,429 deaths, including 426 children. The fourth indirectly confirmed case of the use of sarin was the attack on the Syrian city of Khan Shekun Idib. As a result of the attack on April 4, 2017, the local population suffered from a chemical warfare agent. It killed at least 89 people, and more than 550 civilians were injured. The investigation of the incident by representatives of the UN and the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons ended without meeting all the necessary requirements. Experts were unable to obtain soil samples and examine the remains of ammunition. The experts' conclusion was based on the analysis of samples taken from 10 victims of the attack. Four laboratories concluded that the airstrike used sarin or a similar nerve gas. This chemical attack gave the United States a reason to launch a missile attack on the Syrian airbase of Shirat Air Base. America itself, after a demonstrative rejection of chemical weapons, even declassified the Army Training Manual from 1957. Particularly interesting is the section that explains how to conduct an effective chemical attack in the field. There's a calculation formula for a strike with howitzers and rocket artillery. Joseph Trevithkik, a military analyst and journalist, decided to test its simplicity and effectiveness in his district in Northern Virginia. He made calculations for the maximum mortality rate among the theoretically present opponents there. The journalist took into account the area, topographical features, temperature, strength, and direction of the wind. He also took into account the possible presence of chemical protection or bunkers. His calculations were based on a 40 to 80% effectiveness against the opponents in a residential area of 48 hectares. 
In order to achieve this, it would be necessary to release at least 1,014 shells in 30 seconds. We're talking about 105mm sarin shells, common in the US arsenal at the time. They could be used by artillery pieces and self-propelled howitzers. But here's the bad luck. More than 250 such howitzers are needed to provide the 30-second shelling calculated by the journalist. At the same time, the effectiveness will be only 40%. Under such conditions, an effective chemical attack on protected military targets and enemy positions seems implausible. The purpose of biological weapons is to kill civilians. This concept mirrors the real picture of attacks in Syria. There, the vast majority of sarin victims were civilians. This is also mentioned in one of the declassified training films of the United States Navy. Gas attacks are aimed at minimizing the population that supports the enemy's armed forces. Farm animals, land, and crops are also affected. This way, the amount of food can be reduced. There's no doubt that a soldier suffering from hunger becomes less effective. This ability to destroy manpower and the population makes sarin and similar substances especially dangerous biological weapons. Do you think it's possible to have a modern world that's completely free from the danger of nerve gas attacks? Or do international agreements fail to tame the political ambitions of governments? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and be careful if you smell the blossoming apple trees when they are not nearby. Don't forget to subscribe to Histographics so you don't miss the next insightful video.